This is the setup we're working with right now. I got the remote in my hand. I wired it the opposite way this time. So now the remote, the how you see it on the remote is how it is in real life. Instead of in and out or up and down, this is what we have right here. So makes a little more sense on the remote. You just don't pay attention to the in and out. But very excited to get going with this tomorrow. We're What's up guys? The project we're gonna be working on today is installing a wireless remote to our winch that we just finished installing the other day. It's already got this wired controller here. Basic up and down switch. But uh, I saw this online, it's compatible with most winches. Really it's just a wireless controller. It's gonna work in most uh, DC applications. Something like this can seem pretty intimidating when you're just looking at the ad on Amazon. And it just shows you a couple wires. There's really no other instructions. It's got a very crude diagram here with a, a winch kind of telling you what to do. But I think in my application, it's gonna be slightly different. We're not really gonna be able to tell until we really get into it. But uh, my idea is I have a voltmeter in my truck. I'm going to disassemble this remote here and get just the three wires out of it and uh, do a little testing with my voltmeter to see what it's actually doing when it's plugged in. And then that'll give me a good idea of what I need to do with these wires um, to kind of make it all pair up. As you can see, I'm wearing my bibs right now. The temperature started dropping pretty quick over here in Raleigh. We were working earlier this morning in Selma, cleaning out two driveway pipes, and I didn't feel cold one bit, but now a couple hours later, I'm freezing out here. You can see my breath, but uh, yeah, that's just what a day in North Carolina is like. Okay, maybe about 10 or 15 minutes later, I've got these wires stripped and some very rough connections going on here so I can figure out what's what. Um, ground running over to the hydraulic split block, believe it or not. But uh, we've got our wireless remote here and we've got our winch. out function really doesn't like to work unless there's some weight pulling down on it got to be careful with how that wire spooling up on the inside but yeah just 15 minutes connecting a few wires with 12 volt dc you're never going to hurt yourself playing around with this stuff just uh be careful and use your common sense now that i've got a general idea of how this works i'm going to mount this little box up on the boom there and uh finalize all these connections all right so we've got the wiring addressed like i want it still have to pretty it up of course but we have the normal control cable took the wires off of that put them into a three-way plug that i picked up at autozone very simple and then that runs to our wireless control box you can see up top there i had to tap into the ground uh, from the power wires on the winch i don't think that should create any issues i'll get it tucked away all nicely everything put together with waterproof connections i just got to go and use some heat to activate the shrink wrap but yeah I'm happy with the way this worked out. I saved the other end to the winch remote so I can get another one of these three inch plugs. And in the event that the wireless remote stops working, I can plug in with the old remote and still be able to use the winch. But making some good progress. Okay, hopefully you guys have a good view here. This is taking place after filming the parts of the video that you guys are going to see after watching the video back i determined that i made 
or that I did a really poor job of explaining what I was doing to you guys. So I'm going to try to provide a little more of an explanation today. Uh, primarily, I am shortening up the main harness that goes to the module for the wireless remote. I'd left it super long uh, at the time just so I could decide really where I wanted it at. But after messing around with it a little bit more, I think it's in a pretty good spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything to length, get those last couple connections on, and uh, we should be ready to rock. Let's open this up. I can kind of tell I made the connection here. I went and tried to find another one of these three-way plugs so that I could wire up the original remote to one of the three-way plugs and then I have the option of using the original remote uh, whenever maybe the wireless remote battery dies or whatever the case may be. Let's see, get this off. Got these exposed the way I need them. With these now exposed, we can take our fancy wire cutters or wire strippers and strip just a little bit off of each one of these for the connection. Something I always forget is that I want to try to do them staggered. So each of the connections don't fall one on top of the other, but I never remember until after I go cutting the wires and we're a little low on length right now. So I'm not gonna risk it. Try to get this thing put back together as quick as we can. Got the confirmation on that Panera project for tomorrow. So several weeks after originally agreeing to do that project and talking about pricing and Several reschedules later, we're finally ready to go. Let's see. Some of these are definitely going to be a little bit long. Let me know what you guys think of this view right here. The overhead view for some of the smaller hands-on projects. I like it since I don't have to wear the GoPro on my head. And I also don't have to worry about moving it around with my own hands so makes things pretty easy on me these are just barely big enough these connectors so we'll get that crimped in This crimped in. Get this crimped in. Really excited for this project tomorrow. It's going to be the first time testing out our new boom that I've been making some modifications to. All right, let's try to remember how I had this before. After taking a look at the piece that I just cut off, I can now pretty clearly see how I had it wired up before. No sense in troubleshooting it twice. So I find it easier to go ahead and get your plug in the crimps so you're not trying to fumble them both around. Got that in. Let's see. that in there crimp that it's in there real nice and then we got red to red not even following my own advice here do that and we can shove our red in there Crimp down, make sure it's in there tight. A 
cut this one down a little bit. Hold that in there. Again, not even following my own advice. Get this last wire in there. Crimp it down. And then we got three good connections. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply some heat and get that covered up. I wish I would have put a piece of shrink wrap on here the right size beforehand, but I guess electrical tape will have to do in this case. Nice. Now we've got those connections made. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up in some electrical tape. Yes, I know electrical tape is probably not the best option for this, but it's going to get the job done. We already have a good waterproof seal, so this should just be a little bit of extra protection. information on this uh, remote unit right here what did I ended up figuring out was black is ground as usual red is your 12 volt hot as usual and the white and the yellow are gonna be your up and down this blue one here is simply just an antenna uh, increase the range on your remote here but the instructions made it pretty clear that white and yellow were gonna be your up and down so the rest is really for you to figure out on your application. If you, I say just hook it up temporary, make sure that your up is your up and your down is your down. And uh, as long as everything checks out, you can finalize your connections from there. But really this couldn't have been any easier. If you have a small amount of experience with electrical stuff, this should be a uh, quick and simple project for you. But. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, this remote that I got was only $15 on Amazon. So for $15, you really cannot complain. Even if it doesn't work out, you're probably going to learn a thing or two along the way. So yeah, just to give you guys a little bit closer shot on how I mounted that. Okay, so just to give a final little recap, I've got the shortened wiring harness up on the boom got rid of a lot of that clutter that i had sitting at the very top i had the rest of that remote harness just bunched up right here and zip tied down but now all we have is a short little length here so i still plan on getting another one of the female versions of this plug so i can wire the old remote in for those situations where maybe we have a, be a dead battery on our remote but for now i'm very happy with how that turned out Another little thing I've been working on. Previously, we've been using three inch suction hose on this machine just because that's what it came with. But on the back of the machine here, it's plumbed for four inch already. So I had the idea to go ahead and get a four inch hose. I'm hoping that will reduce the amount of times we get clogs here in the hose. And since this is a four inch, but we'll still be digging with three inch tools like that six inch straw on the back, 
theoretically we shouldn't get any clogs inside of our hose anymore anything that's small enough to clog up the system will get stuck there in our uh, straw and it'll be a lot easier to remove than trying to spray water through our entire hose but um this is the setup we're working with right now i got the remote in my hand i wired it the opposite way this time so now the remote the how you see it on the remote is how it is in real life instead of in and out or up and down this is what we have right here so makes a little more sense on the remote you just don't pay attention to the in and out but very excited to get going with this tomorrow we're finally going to be tackling that panera project and this should really make things uh pretty easy so yeah i think that'll do it for today got the remote all finished up on our machine but hopefully i was able to teach you guys a thing or two along the way